and uh, here at 30. All right, guys, we got the 2018 bear open from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Over the years, uh, the state of Oklahoma has uh, treated me pretty, pretty well. You can see just how far left he is. A little bit of loft over the left gutter. As some of you know, the bear is um, one of the one of the hardest patterns that we bowl on throughout the year. And uh, the last time we had bowled on the bear pattern was in uh, 2016 in Detroit. We bowled the the fall swing up there. I was able to win that one as well, and that was the first time I had won on TV. So I was the de defending uh, the Bear champion because we did not bowl it in 2017. And uh, this event, it was kind of a, it was up and down the whole time we were bowling. Championship match, but since Danielle had some uh, had some really good games, had some. Not so great games, but uh, I was able to, you know, put everything together, fight my way through it, and uh, get myself on the show after barely missing the show on um, the uh, wolf pattern. Not a very good shot there. Typically, uh, as we've seen over my career, my, my first shot normally isn't very good. And um, I'm not sure why that is. It's the only thing I could attest to it is just getting my getting my feet underneath me. Even though I'd already bowled some games before, I'm bowling Stu here for the title match. Um, every time I start a game, I feel like it's it's starting over. It's um, got to get my feet underneath me. You know, get my heart rate back down, and kind of settle into the match. It's kind of how I feel every time. Uh, Every time I get in these situations, many countries. I can remember bowling against him ten years ago, and his many titles in many countries, and a great player. Very good at going straight. Very good at hooking it. Very diverse player. And like I said, the the bear pattern is one of the harder ones we bowl on. And um, I think I think that's why I've had some success on it is just because it is a little bit harder. Um, I like the lanes when when they're when they're hard. Um, I think it brings two, two the best so this year, bowlers yeah. out when they're a little bit harder. Uh, you know, he, at least the guys that are bowling the best at that time. This because, uh, uh, you know, the, the margin for error goes away. It he puts a premium on spare shooting. Com, but and at point, the end of the week, to, to whoever is really bowling the, the best, and whoever and can Anderson make some spares, you're going to see them at the end of the week the kind of on, on TV shows and, you know, in the top five, top ten. Not all the time they make the show, but you're going to see them, you're going to see them right there. And this week, there was, uh, there was a lot of guys. We had three shows, and there was a lot of guys that made all the shows, made two out of three of the shows. So we had the same people on, on all the step ladders. And... I think there's a lot of contributing factors to that building itself, how it, how the lanes played, and what style or what have you of bowlers that kind of matched up to the bowling center. Even though you match up to a bowling center, you still have to make shots. You still have to make spares. And very uh, disappointed. We see Stu there. He thought he threw a really good shot in that left lane. The left lane was not pretty. And we see Chris Prather here. He was one of the guys that I believe he made all three shows there in Tulsa. And he bowled absolutely amazing. He went on to uh, the following week and made the show at the U.S. Open as well. And for the first time in my career on a stepladder or a show like this, um, we actually tied and had a roll-off. This was the first time it ever happened for me. And when I got into the roll-off, I, I believe I threw the back um, six or so strikes to force Chris to double in the 10th frame. We got up in the first one, 10 straight back. So at that moment, I thought, well, I'm done. Chris is bowling really good. He's got the mojo going. There's no way he doesn't strike. He gets up, and I'm not sure if he threw it a little too hard or what. Or what happened, but he left a uh, Swisher 10 pin. He was able to make that, and uh, we went into a roll off, and I was able to get nine. And he threw a shot that off his hand, I thought he 
dead aced. I thought it was 10 straight back off his hand, and it was on this left lane. And uh, it just kind of wiggled down lane. There was a there was a spot there that the ball just would not hook from, and his ball hit it, and he left a, a four eight, I believe. And uh, I got eight pins, and I was able to, to win that roll off with just getting nine. With a double and uh, a double. I was able to get into this title match. So, you got that one in. You can tell and you the see me there. Um, <laughs> I'm pulling my elbow out. It's just that lane just did not want to hook. It's so hard to get yourself to throw the ball where you need to and how you need to when you know that if there's a certain spot you hit, the ball just won't hook. So very, very it, uh, yeah, it gets it pretty like difficult in uh, in situations like this, especially when yeah. you're bowling on a you pattern that's already difficult, and then you add in you wish the um, a lane that just has a has a oil spot down lane and won't hook. It's a it's a bad combination mentally to try to um, overcome. And the spare shot there, I missed what I was looking at. I was trying to go in between the 310 and, and get the 9 with the ball. I missed it left and got really, really lucky to, to make that spare. That was, uh, that was a complete, complete miss on my part. But like I've said before, you... Uh, Sometimes you need you need a break every now and then. And some days you you see some guys that that end up winning that uh they get some breaks along the way and you know some days it's just meant to be. So I get up and and miss the I basically miss the spare and still make it and Stu gets up and throws an absolute perfect shot and leaves a stone 9. And uh and that's bowling. You know, one guy gets a break and the other guy and the other guy gets the opposite. He gets a bad break. And uh, like I said, they're really hard, so it's it's hard to get your ball to just go in the pocket anyway. And then when you throw a really good shot like that and, and stone nine and get a bad break, it's just it's heart-wrenching because these games go by so fast. In, in title matches that uh, you know a lot of times you can't you can't really afford to have that happen and um, all you can do is is get up on the on the next lane and on the next shot and, and make the best shot possible but in the back of your mind you're like oh man if that could have just fell it could have completely changed the match could have changed the tone of the match and uh, that that can actually happen, you know. If Stu strikes there and gets up and strikes here, you know, it makes me think, makes me think about it a little bit. And he threw another great shot there. So if that nine pin falls and he doesn't leave it, you know, the the tone of the match is completely different, in my opinion. Because he would still be in control and still be um, ahead in the match. Instead, uh, instead at this point. I was uh, I was ahead in the match. Yeah, for EJ there, pocket hits 81.75 percent, carry percentage 87.25. We see some uh, statistics here by Lane Talk and uh, pocket percentage and how much you carry when you hit the pocket. And I would say on our tour that uh, the pocket carry percentage, Belmo probably has the highest one because he throws pins around like nobody we've ever seen before. And uh, this week he didn't, I don't think he had the best week of his career, but, you know, that's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, that, he, uh, he throws pins around, and when he does hit the pocket and his ball's doing the right thing, not very often do you see pins left standing on the deck. And EJ with the defending champion in this event, looking to go back to back on the bear. So an eight-pin lead for EJ. So the mindset on this lane is just... With a strike here for Make sure that you uh, you keep your hand in the right spot at the bottom of the swing. Roll that ball out of your hand. And just try to get it to do the right thing, which I wasn't able to do on that particular shot again. And uh, I believe on that lane I just missed the move. I didn't move left quick enough. And you can see me crouching down there. We could uh, see the lines on the lane where we've where we've been throwing shots. So that's what I'm checking for. Just trying to see where, how far left I need to move when I come back to this lane, and what I think I need to do if I need to do anything different with my hand position, need to do anything with with my speed. This pattern is is so sensitive to all of those things. 
And so he's looking to take a look and, uh, and see. I'm walking over there, talking to, talking to Brett, and just basically reassuring myself of, of the move that I need to make on that line. Yeah, yeah. Like snow tracks. You can see the tracks in the snow, but, uh, yeah, and it's very few surfaces you can see that on, but this is one that you can see the ball pass on there, especially with the rev rates of these guys tearing the oil off the lane. You can see the track of the ball going down the lane. So a chance for a lead change with a strike here for Stu Williams. Another great the shot there by Stu. Takes a two pin lead. Like I said, like you know, if Stu carries that nine pin, the uh, this match is completely different, especially at this point EJ after I missed twice. My max score now is only 247. Probably Stu can board still bowl 259 yeah, at this point, but 270 to 259 is, is a huge difference because that gives him an opportunity where if he does miss one, one time, He's still so ahead in the match. Instead, lane, now, uh, if he misses, he's behind in the match. So, far today, the being a, so uh, to make a shot like that can prove vital when you go back and look look back over it. It could have really changed the whole dynamic of this match. In this whole game, Stu threw some really, really good shots. This whole game, and he... Uh, he honestly didn't get a, a lot of breaks, and there we see that left lane where he hit that that uh, that oil spot down there, and I thought he threw a good shot. He thought he threw a good shot, but the ball got down there and just didn't want to hook. And uh, I think that's why, smartly, why uh, he chose not to finish on that lane. He's gonna go. He's gonna try to hook it a little bit here. And doesn't hook it that was very close to that picking up that spare. Two boards left. So at this point, I feel like I've got a you know, pretty good lead in the match. I'm leading by 26 pins at this point if I strike out. So I know that uh, getting up in the 7th and 8th frame here, that uh, if I can just throw a double, it's going to be huge. It's going to put all the pressure on him and uh, make him have to perform to, uh, to make me show up in the 10th frame. EJ going to be up about 15 or 16 pins here with a mark. Let's see what he does, and he yeah, delivers a, nice a strike. And, and that was a time. really, really good shot after after two shots in a row on the left lane of not throwing it good. You know, I got to this point. And I think uh, Brett had told me to, you know, just stay down in my shot and, and try to make sure that I rolled the ball out of my hand. So I really focused on that, these these couple shots here at the end of the game, where uh, I made sure I didn't pop up out of them, made sure I stayed down nice and nice and low into the line, and uh, and just let that ball come off my hand real smooth and, and, and roll it. And I threw two really, really good shots. Now that one went a little bit high. But uh, for that split and open in you know, I was <laughs> it was able to, to hang in there and uh, and not leave a, a stone nine. Whereas Stu left that one earlier, and um, it's shots like that where where I get the break and Stu doesn't. You know, that's a that's a twenty or thirty pin swing in the in the match right there. Stu goes in a. And it was another great shot there, and it's like I like I said before, these this pattern is just so sensitive to speed, so sensitive to how you roll the ball out of your hand. If it's not if it's not perfect, um, it could be detrimental. And um, that shot that's two through, I thought was really really good, and it just overhooked a little bit. And I don't know if it was uh, if he just got around the ball a little bit, made it come off the pattern a little bit sharper down lane, or if his speed was a little slow. But it's so minute that uh, it it could have been any of those things or or both. And, he does and that was a, a great move for him there on that left lane after leaving the 2 4 eight, 10 the shot before. So now I know if I get up here, if I throw a strike here, all I got to do in the 10th frame is just get count. And this has been uh, over the, the couple of games that I bowled on this day, this right lane was 
was really, really good for me. The, the ball shaped up the right way. It didn't have that oil spot that the left lane did. So I was pretty confident coming into this right lane. And uh, this is one of the best shots I threw the entire day. And um, you know, I knew at that point all I had to do was you know, get up get up on this lane and, and get a good count. And then the, the match was over. The thing that can get in his way right now is a Greek church. Really the only thing that can stop this match from ending without EJ Tackett. The shot that I, uh, the shot that I throw over here, it's, uh, it's, it's not my best. You know, we thought, I will sorry, say that. A, uh, three, we had that, uh, six, I talked seven, about that little tonight, oil spot so down lane on this one. And I get up there and the I got my hand shots. around the ball a little bit. It was a little bit spinny. And uh, you'll see that the ball just wouldn't, didn't hook at all. It was online, but you can see how it just came right off the pattern. And, and it just wiggled down just lane and didn't continue to drive through the pocket. So now the I leave the two four eight and it's not an not an easy spare to convert with the double wood, but doing the math quickly in my head, I knew that all I needed was to get two pins. So I elected to throw it straight at it, which the percentage of of making it isn't great, but I knew I only needed two, so I threw straight at it and made sure that I hit that that two pin in that four pin with the ball and I wasn't too concerned about making it at that point just because I knew that I didn't have to and I, I think I said this in an interview after the after the event that you know you never you never really want to win that way you want to get up in the 10th and and still perform and, and not and not get an open but at the end of the day it's uh, a win is a win and uh, they don't they don't put on the trophy how you won you just uh, you get to take it home and, and put it on the shelf it was kind of a it was a pretty crazy crazy ending to uh, to this match <laughs> I'd never done anything like that before typically you know even in situations like this I uh, I was still able to get up and throw some strikes but uh, unfortunately this day I wasn't able to but uh, so like I said, uh, you, score, nobody remembers 12, or cares how you did it. It just, uh, at the end Tackett of your career, they all they remember is how many times you won. So, but my hat's off to Stu. He bowled really, really well this week, and he went on in the uh, the Tulsa Open to to claim his second title. And uh, he, we actually bowled each other again in that match, and uh, he uh, he gave it back to me a little bit and and threw some really, really good shots. And uh, I wasn't able to uh, bowl my best that game, and and Stu was able to bowl a really really good game and, and go on to win. So my hats off to him, uh, getting that second win and kind of getting that monkey off his back. And um, I foresee in the future Stu uh, Stu winning a couple of more times now that he's got that that second win and and that monkey off his back that he can actually do it again. So uh, I would be on the lookout for Stu Williams in the in the near future.